Question 11. What is C's fallback in LTE? Answer. LTE technology supports packet-based services only. However, 3GPP does specify fallback for circuit-switched services as well. To achieve this LTE architecture and network nodes require additional functionality, this blog is an attempt to provide overview for same. In LTE architecture, the circuit switched. CS fallback in EPS enables the provisioning of voice and traditional CS domain services. For example, CS UDI video slash SMS slash LCS slash USSD. To provide these services, LTE reuses CS infrastructure when the UE is served by EU TRAN. Question 12. How does LTE security works? Answer. The following are some of the principles of 3GPP EU Tron security based on 3GPP release 8 specifications. The keys used for NAS and AS protection shall be dependent on the algorithm with which they are used. The ENB keys are cryptographically separated from the EPC keys used for NAS protection, making it impossible to use the ENB key to figure out an EPC key. The AS, R, R, C and U P and NAS keys are derived in the EPCUE from key material that was generated by ANAS, EPCUE, level AKM procedure, KASME, and identified with a key identifier, KSIASME. The ENB key, KENB, is sent from the EPC to the ENB when the UE is entering ECM connected state, i.e. during RRC connection or S1 context setup. Question 13. What is IP Multimedia Subsystem? IMS. Answer. The 3GPP IP Multimedia Subsystem IMS, technology provides an architectural framework for delivering IP-based multimedia services. IMS enables telecom service providers to offer a new generation of rich multimedia services across both circuit-switched and packet-switched networks. IMS offers access to IP-based services independent of the access network for example wireless access, GP RS 3G P P's UMTS LTE 3G P P2 CDMA 2000 and fixed networks T I S P A N N G N IMS defines a architecture of logical elements using SIP for call signaling between network elements and provides a layered approach with defined service control and transport planes. Some of IMS high-level requirements are noted below. The application plane provides an infrastructure for the provision and management of services, subscriber configuration and identity management and defines standard interfaces to common functionality. The IMS control plane handles the call-related signaling and controls transport plane. Major element of control plane is the call session control function CSCF, which comprises proxy CSCF, PCSCF, interrogating CSCF, ICSCF, and serving CSCF, SCSCF, the CSCF. Call slash session control function is essentially a SIP server. The IMS transport plane provides a core IP network with access from subscriber device over wireless or wireline networks. Question 14. How does measurements work in LTE? Answer. In LTE EU Tron measurements to be performed by AUE for mobility are classified as below intra frequency EU Tron measurements. Enter frequency EU Tron measurements. Enter RAT measurements for U Tron and GERAN. Enter RAT measurements of CDM 2000 HRPD or 1 XRTT frequencies. Question 15. What is automatic neighbor relation? Answer. According to 3GPP specifications, the purpose of the automatic neighbor relation NR, functionality is to relieve the operator from the burden of manually managing neighbor relations NRs. This feature would operator's effort to provision. Question 16. How intra-EU Tron handover does is performed? Answer. Intra-EU Tron handover is used to hand over a UE from a source E node B to a target E node B using X2 when the MME is unchanged. In the scenario described here serving GW is also unchanged. The presence of IP connectivity between the serving GW and the source E node B, as well as between the serving GW and the target E node B is assumed. The intra-EU Tron HO in RRC underscore connected state is UE assisted NW controlled HO, with HO preparation signaling in EU Tron.
Question 17. How does policy control and charging works in LTE? Answer. An important component in LTE network is the policy and charging control PCC function that brings together and enhances capabilities from earlier 3GPP releases to deliver dynamic control of policy and charging on a per subscriber and per IP flow basis. LTE Evolved Packet Core EPC EPC includes a PCC architecture that provides support for fine-grained Q OS and enables application servers to dynamically control the QoS and charging requirements of the services they deliver. It also provides improved support for roaming. Dynamic control over QoS and charging will help operators monetize their LTE investment by providing customers with a variety of QoS and charging options when choosing a service. The LTE PCC functions include PCRF policy and charging rules function provides policy policy control and flow-based charging control decisions. PCEF policy and charging enforcement function implemented in the serving gateway. This enforces gating and QoS for individual IP flows on the behalf of the PCRF. It also provides usage measurement to support charging. OCS online charging system provides credit management and grants credit to the PCEF based on time, traffic volume or chargeable events. OFCS offline charging system receives events from the PCEF and generates charging data records CDRs for the billing system question 18 what is SON and how does it work in LTE answer self-configuring self-optimizing wireless networks is not a new concept but as the mobile networks are evolving towards 4G LTE networks introduction of self-configuring and self-optimizing mechanisms is needed to minimize operational efforts a self-optimizing function would increase network performance and quality reacting to dynamic processes in the network this would minimize the life cycle cost of running a network by eliminating manual configuration of equipment at the time of deployment right through to dynamically optimizing radio network performance during operation. Ultimately it will reduce the unit cost and retail price of wireless data services. Question 19. How does network sharing works in LTE? Answer. 3GPP network sharing architecture allows different core network operators to connect to a shared radio access network. The operators do not only share the radio network elements, but may also share the radio resources themselves. Question 20. How does timing advance TA works in LTE? Answer. In LTE, when UE wish to establish a RC connection with ENB, it transmits a random access preamble. ENB estimates the transmission timing of the terminal based on this. Now ENB transmits a random access response which consists of timing advance command. Based on that UE adjusts the terminal transmit timing. The timing advance is initiated from EUtron with MAC message that implies an adjustment of the timing advance.